So I've actually gotten this question more than once now, which is uh, how do you make sort of irregular pebble-shaped geometry in Revit or Vasari? Um, I guess people have got enough money to be making those sorts of buildings again these days, or people are back in school. Either way, I'm happy to oblige. Um, so basically, if you want to make a shape like this, I'm going to go into a mass environment here. And there's a couple different ways I'm going to just show you my favorite way, or one that I think is the most stable. Um, I'm going to do a reference line, and I'm going to do splines. And I'm going to make these things in a particular way. I'm going to make sure that I have this 90 degrees out, and I'm just going to sketch some lines. And then I'm going to do again, and let's see if I can snap to 90 there. Where's my 90? And I'm doing 90 because I want to keep tangents to my splines here. Tangents allow me to have a nice smooth transition because whether you like it or not, Revit doesn't do complete smooth elements uh, in one one full loop. So you need to do two loops. So I've got my one loop there. And I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to take the level that it's on. I'm going to copy it straight up and I'm going to make, I don't know, I guess I'll make, I'll make four of them. And maybe I'll drop this one down a little bit. And I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. With my scale tool, let's say it's out like that. And I'm going to take this one, the very top one, and this is where it gets a little weird. I'm going to make it super tiny. I'm going to go and bring it in pretty small, just like that. And those are going to be my starting profiles. I'm going to pick all four of them. I'm going to create a form element. And you can see this guy's probably a little bit low. And if I take this guy, I'm going to turn on x ray mode just so I can see what's going on. I'm going to look over here from the side. And what I want to do is I want to make this profile basically come into a tangency position so I have a nice smooth pebble. And looks like it needs to be a little higher. Anyway, you can massage this guy a little bit whether you go up or down and basically I'm just messing with my pebble here a little bit uh, but right away you can start to get that irregular shape I'm going to turn off uh, x-ray mode again and I'm also just going to turn on I'm going to turn off my edge display and just going to isolate this so I can inspect it a little bit. I've got a pretty smooth pebbly element there. And the reason I always like using reference lines because it just allows me to still get real fine grain control over this thing. So if I want to go in and I want to pull around that profile and massage the shape of this guy a little bit, I can do that. It looks like I've gone sort of too far you get the idea. So now you can make this thing whatever sort of shape you want. And it's going to be a solid so you can take it in to uh, the main Revit environment and cut it into floor plates or do volumes, do whatever you want to uh, make this into a <laughs> building. That's the shape of a pebble because we're all doing that these days, right? All right. Well, that was all there is to it. A couple other things just to note about this before I go. Um, when you do the reference lines, there's a couple other reasons why this is kind of nice. You can go and you can select everything. You can just get the reference lines. And you can actually mess with the scale of the thing all at once. So you can scale them all like this. You can go numerical. You can say you want it 75% of that size. And you know they'll all go together. And the other thing is that while there's easier ways to get the initial shape, they're harder to control. I'm just going to show that real quick. Now I've got a model line spline, and I'm just going to do one profile. So again, I'm going to do my 90 degrees to keep my tangency. And where's my 90? Do, 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 here. And I'm going to do my other one. Snap. Now, this would seem to be a much faster way to do it, where I'm just going to create the form, 
like that. And I'm then I'm gonna add profiles to it, like this. And I go one, two, two profiles. So now I have four things I can manipulate. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, which is scaling this top one down to almost nothing. And if I go into X-ray mode, I can again grab these guys and scale them down. Oops. Ah, here's the problem again. Maybe I can't actually. Oh yeah, I can scale it down. So let's say that I just do that. And so this all seems like it's much faster, right? There is one problem with this though. And that is, remember how I was going in here and I was grabbing these profiles on my reference lines? And somehow I was grabbing my reference lines. Damn you, snap order. Now I have my control point so I can move things around like that. Now the problem is with these guys is that when they're model lines and they're all swept together for whatever reason, um, you don't get those same control lines. These things become um, much more staticky kinds of elements. So that is one reason why I like to stay with reference lines. They are pure and sure and I always know what they're going to do. Just one more element to this to think about.